All right, so for this lesson, we're going to go ahead and put our little score up in the corner. I guess we should look at the game view. We're going to go ahead and just stick a little score up there, but we're going to use Unity's new UI system. So let's go ahead, right click, and let's go right down to the UI system, or sorry, the UI menu option. And we're going to click text. And this is going to add three things to our hierarchy. Uh, we have the canvas, we have the event system, and we have the text. Now, right off the bat, I like to rename some of these things, but let's go ahead and take a look at them first. Uh, the event system we are going to cover in a later video, but that uses all the input events for us. Uh, what I really want to look at in this video is the canvas. If we scroll all the way out, we see it here, and it's relative to the area that your screen covers here. So if we go ahead and switch over to, I don't know, three by two, we see how it changes. Now, in order to keep a pixel perfect, each unit is equal to one unit in world space, so each pixel. That's why it looks so big. Now, it's not actually that big in game, it's just the way it looks in your, your scene view. So let's go ahead, we have our text, which is right here. It's gray, it's hard to see, so I'm gonna go ahead and first thing I wanna do is change that color, which I can do down here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make it something bright. Let's just do white for now. And we can see it down in the scene view. I'm gonna go ahead and close that down. And I'm actually gonna switch my aspect ratio over to 16 by nine. That's your general 1080p scaled settings. So we can see it here. Uh, I'm actually gonna change it to score, colon, and I don't know, a thousand sounds good. Just so I have an idea of how it looks. So let's go over some of these options here. In order to position it, you can go ahead and position things manually the way you want them. I know exactly where I want it, and Unity has a quick way of putting it there. I want it in this corner. But if we look up here, we can also set the pivot points and also the position simply by pushing Shift and Alt. And we notice they change. And we have a few options at the sides in order to have it scale automatically full width for us, either in one direction or the other, or both. And if we zoom in a bit, we can see the, the anchors. That's these little four corners right here. So what I'm actually just gonna do, just to get things rolling, is go ahead and put it in that top corner. There we go, way up there. I don't want it right up against the side, so I am gonna go ahead and move it off a bit. Uh, probably about 10 pixels to the right, and we'll move it down 10 pixels, so that'll be a negative 10. So about there looks good. And the rest of the stuff I don't have to worry about, the scale, the rotation, I'm leaving the anchors where they got set from here. Um, I'm gonna leave the height the way it is. Let's keep coming down. Now I don't have any other fonts. You can go ahead and grab some off the internet or the asset store, there's tons of free ones there. I'm just gonna stick with that one. I wanna make sure it's left aligned because I want it to stay in this corner. If I go ahead and hit right align, it's gonna move depending on the size of your, let me get it here, of the box that you made it. You can just see that faint outline on the box. It's kind of hard with the grid, I guess. But you can see that faint outline. So if you made the box wider, it'd be over more, but I want to keep it left aligned. And because I've moved it down 10 already, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it aligned at the top. I want to keep it wrapped and truncated. Uh, best fit, you can go ahead and click it and that'll fit automatically. I usually like to set a size. So something maybe around 20, 24. That looks good. Can I get 28 without making it bigger? I cannot. So I'm just gonna go 24. Like I said, you can go ahead and make, make it a little bit higher. Let's do uh, 34 in height. And that should allow me to go 28. There we go. That looks good. And that's pretty much all I wanna cover right now. Uh, but there are two little things that I can add to this text to make it look a little bit better. And I find myself adding these quite a bit, one or the other. I'll do both of them here just to show it out. And the first one will be an outline. And it just gives that little outline around your, your text as I zoom in. Turn it off, turn it on. I guess with the scene, it's kind of hard to see. But we'll go ahead, we'll keep that. And the other one I wanna do is a shadow. And I usually like my shadow just a little bit bigger. And maybe, let's do a red, let's do a red shadow. 
Maybe not quite that red, a little darker red. Uh, red seems to be a little blurry. Blue. Blue looks good. All right. So I've got it set up. I've got something set up that can display my score. Now we have to go ahead and create a script. But before I do that, I like to rename my UI stuff. So this text is actually a score. So I'm actually going to call it score. And this canvas is actually going to be my game UI. There we go. And I'm going to come down to my scripts and create one. And I'm going to call it. Well, here, here's the thing. If I have a lot of UI elements, sometimes I'll just make one big UI master script and throw it onto whatever my canvas is, and it'll control all of them. I think for this game, I want to keep it super simple because it's just a demonstration. I'm just going to go ahead and probably only have a score here. So I'm just going to make one script called score, and I'm going to click on the score, and I'm going to add it right to it. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and save my scene and open up that script in Mono Develop. And we'll go ahead, we'll make this bigger so everyone can see. All right, so in order to change that score, I'm going to have to keep track of the score. So I'm going to go ahead and keep a public float. Actually, my score is never going to be a decimal. So for this, I'm just going to keep it int. And I'm going to do score, lowercase. Make sure you keep it lowercase if you called your class score. And I'm going to go ahead and just start it off at zero. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that off. And I want to point something out here. So if we're trying to change the display on the score, we have to access the text component. And then we have to access the text element of that text component. But in order to access that text component in the UI, we have to add another namespace up here. And that namespace is you the engine dot not us ui those keys aren't even close together are they so by adding this namespace now we can go ahead and grab the public text and i'm just going to call it text and we'll save that off and quickly go assign that now just to make sure we don't forget so as soon as it finishes compiling there we go now there's a couple of ways we can do this i'm not sure if i've demonstrated this before but one is we can go ahead grab score Drag it right in, so it knows to grab its own component, or the right component, I guess I should say. Let's go ahead, we'll, whoops, uh, where are we? Score, I wanna go ahead and remove that, so none. Uh, another thing we could do is just grab the actual component itself and drag it in. Either one of them works. So I'm gonna save the scene now that I have it selected, and I'm gonna come down. And the first method I want to make is uh, something that well, we don't ever need to return. All we're going to do is add a score, add to the score. So I'm just going to call it add. And in here, I want to input some sort of value. So AMT will be the amount we are going to add. And I'm just going to say score. Do we want to add to it? So we've looked at this before. Uh, so we do the plus equals and then AMT and put the colon. So all I'm doing is taking that score we have up here and we're going to add the amount that comes in here through this method. And I like to keep this line separate, but we also need to update the display. So void, update, display. And this does not take anything or return anything. And what we want to do here is go ahead and get this text component. Grab the text element of it and have it equal something. In this case, I'm just going to say that score, semicolon, space. Then I'm going to go ahead and just concat on the actual score itself. And let's say for some reason I wanted to start the score off at some big high score just to test it out. Maybe I was actually doing it over here, I guess. I and we actually do have it at a thousand. But when I start my game up, I don't want them to have a thousand to start up, right? If we go ahead and hit play, starting off at a thousand, not what I want. I want them to start off at zero. So what I usually do is go ahead and just in the start method, call that update display. So void start. I guess just to make sure that for 
for some reason my score is nothing but zero. We could go ahead and assign it here as well. I'm gonna say update display, finish that off. Then of course, once we add to the score, we have to update the display again. And this way here, if uh, maybe I have some sort of visual effect when I update the display, maybe there's some sparkles or the text grows and shrinks and everything else. Since it's its own method, it's just easy to add that in later. All right, so let me quickly look here. So when we start off, we're gonna go ahead, zero it out, update. We have a, whoop, this needs to be public because we have to call this one from outside of the script in order to add to it. We're not gonna cover static classes just yet. Maybe in the next game, we will next week, but not right now. So we've got a public way to go ahead and add a score. And we also have a way to update the text. Great, let's save that off. And I'm gonna jump into, I believe it was my projectile. Right here, scored some points. So what we want to do is when we score some points, we want to increase the score. Now, in order to do that, that means I have to go out and get a reference. So I'm going to say public score. I'm just going to call it score. So now we're looking for we're look, going out and looking for something that is a score. And let's quickly jump into Unity. Now, any one of these game objects can also be referenced by their components. So for instance, this FPS controller, instead of just going out looking for a game object with a tag, we can also go out and look for things by type. But more specifically is when we're referencing them, we can reference them by type. So instead of just saying, you know, this is a game object, we could say this is also a transform. This is also a character controller. This is also a first person controller and so on and so on. And it comes in really handy, so you don't have to dig down and get specific components if you know that you're only ever going to interact with one component. In this case, as far as that game object that has our score component on it, we're only ever going to play around with the score. We're not going to touch any of the other stuff. So let's just typecast a score. Now, we do not have a way to assign it because when we instantiate, each one is going to have to go out and find it. And we really should think of a different way to do this. Go ahead and maybe have it be uh, part of the player or something that's always in the game. So it only has to go out, find it once and then use that reference over and over again. But just to keep things super simple, I'm gonna go ahead in my awake function. Remember when awake fires? That's right, it's the first method we actually get to do anything in. And this is where I like to go out and find stuff that needs to be found. So I'm gonna go out and say score is equal to game object, not get object, game object dot find object with tag. The tag I wanna grab is score. And I'm gonna grab the score component. So we'll need get component component we want is score. It's a bit of a long line, but that's okay. We could have broken this up into two lines. And I might do it just after done this, just to show you that it works the exact same. All right, so just make sure we go, we create the score tag and we assign it. So I'm gonna have to come in here. Whoops, I accidentally turned my FPS into my main camera. What I wanna do is add tag. We'll add one. I'm gonna call it score. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my score now and call it score. Save scene. I just want to quickly check that player. Yep. All right, so instead of doing it this way here, one way we could have did it was to go ahead and make some other game object. I'm just gonna call it temp and make that equal to the game object dot find object with tag. And then say score is equal to temp dot, then use the get component part here. So this section. And I'll do this a lot for uh, more complex games, simply because I want to go out and check to see if that score exists. And then before I try to assign it to score, that's when, I, when I'd go ahead and make sure it exists. But because of the way it's set up, it's so simple, I know it's going to exist. And I can do it all in one line. 
All right, so we're going to go out and find the score every time a bullet fires. Yuck. But anyway, it should work. Come back in. I don't see any errors. And now that we're finding it, I'm still not assigning a score. Let's do that. So let's go ahead and say score dot add. And how many points do we want to add? I'm just going to hard cast in. Let's give him 100 points for everyone he kills. There we go. So again, this score is the reference to score up here we're getting. So I'm going to save it. Come back in. Nothing blew up. Looking good. Go ahead, mute. And let's go find us something to shoot. Oh, big game. Oh, oh, bam, got it. And we see the score update. Bam. So there we go. Now we have a way to score. So I guess in the next video, let's find a way for us to die. <laughs> and for that, I'm just going to go ahead and have some sort of like melee combat. If for some reason a cube ever gets to me and touches me, I die. Uh, maybe we'll put up a little end game screen. But anyway, that's all I wanted to do for this lesson, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.